everyone, and welcome back to Fancy Football. And we'll be looking at uh, this midweek edition of the Premier League. We'll be predicting this ma these matches, the six matches for this week, starting from Arsenal versus um, Chelsea. And with me on the show today is no other than the, the, the lost son of Fancy Football, uh, Arome. Arome, good afternoon, and how are you? Oh, thank you. Good to be back. I'm Philip. It's, it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. Yeah, it's nice to have you on the show. We've we've tried to have you, but um, during the Nations Cup, but uh, you had uh, a very yeah, busy schedule in Abidjan. Uh, yeah, mm. but uh, good to have you on this edition of um, the prediction segment of the Premier League. Um, a lot of it's things really have happened. Yes, a lot of things have happened, and a lot of things will continue to happen in football. We'll continue so, to happen. Exactly. So um, let's look at uh, the first match. Of uh, this midweek on Tuesday, Arsenal will host Chelsea, and this is a mouth watering mm. match. Oh, yes. uh, despite uh, yes, a mouth watering match, um, Arsenal will want to consolidate their position in the Premier League. They are now first on the mm. table if you look at their position. And the bookmakers, I, I know you will not like it, but uh, the bookmakers don't, don't, don't give the final score, but the bookmakers are giving Arsenal a, a huge, huge percentage win in that match. But like I said, they don't give the final score. The final score has to happen after 90 minutes. 62% sure, by the bookmakers. Yeah, 62% by the bookmakers for Arsenal to win that match. And 17% for Chelsea as well to win the match. 21% uh, possible draw. So this is a win probability for for this uh, for this match. And um, I want to ask you, your prediction is a 2-2 prediction. So what's up to you to take a 2-2 prediction for this match? Yeah. Oh, well, um, you know, um, a lot of times some of these um, predictions um, or the bookmakers, the yeah. things they look at are not what the regular fans they look at. They look at variables, they look at these, they look at fitness and all of that. But um, we, the fans, we who like to predict, um, analysts, you might want to call us, uh, we like to look at form, the current form of the team, regardless of... Um, um, history. Um, when you talk of history, you look at um, the Chelsea and Arsenal. It has never been a, an easy run. No matter the position on the table, any of the team is, it is never a game where you feel, oh, going into the match, it's going to be one side. It's going to be Chelsea's game. It's going to be um, Arsenal's game. No, it's always um, a, a huge run. And you look at um, the form, the form of both teams coming into this in, into this match. You see Arsenal having them um, winning just two matches, losing two and drawing one. Um, that's in, in all competitions now. Yeah. You look at just winning two, drawing two, and losing one. So, if we want to talk about form, um, you're looking at um, uh, um, Chelsea looking to nip the bird. Um, Arsenal uh, are beginning to have their players um, return from injuries, um, but will they be match? Will they all be match fit um, before the encounter? That is where the question is going to lie. Um, Chelsea are also beginning to have one one two players back from injury the last game she were featured um albeit he didn't play so well he wasn't convincing enough but um you expect him to be at least um better than he he did um, against um city in the fa cup and Chelsea's um only loss in the last five matches was against a good city team albeit they were a bit tired um Chelsea just couldn't convert their chances uh, what, what we're saying today would have been a different ball game if Chelsea had converted their chances so you look at that, that's where the problem comes because um, the, the, the top striker in Jackson isn't converting so much. Um, other players on the team are having to convert. Palmer coming in, Mudrik and Madrik and all of that, having to come in to rescue the team when they win matches, you know. Um, you see Chelsea winning Everton 6-0 and you expect to have your top nine scoring the hat trick where you're having your winger, your right winger, having to score up to four goals in a single game. So it says a lot about your, your top nine, you know. So that is the only problem Chelsea are going to have. But again, Arsenal are having the same issues. Um, the, 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 their struggles in their last five, seven matches have been because they've not been scoring goals, but considering. If you consider and you don't score, you lose games. You know, so um, the two both teams are having the same issues. They have wonderful playmakers. They are wonderful goalkeepers. They have good um, defensive midfielders. They have good ball carrying midfielders up forward. But the problem they've had from the start of the season, or let me not say from the start because Arsenal started better. Um, Gabriel Jesus was converting. Inketia coming in, he was scoring as a top nine. But somehow 
from the uh, after the Christmas um, and the New Year break, they started falling off. Um, uh, when injuries started coming in, the, both of them have started having issues. But by and large, both teams are struggling in front of goal, um, but they are not defending so well to stop goals going into their net. Um, so I'm giving the two two because these two teams have deadly wingers, um, deadly midfielders that can score, and they will have among um, the best two penalty takers in the league currently in Jorginho and Palma, they're in these two teams. So when you bring in penalties, we have they have the players to score. Um, so I'm giving the 2-2 two -two as a fair result um, for the match. Um, it can change, but that's my own um, prediction from um, their form so far. Okay, next matchup is um, Wolf at the Millennium against um, Bournemouth. If you look at uh, Wolf, mm. last time out they played Arsenal and you expected them to give a, 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 a good account of themselves against Arsenal. But Arsenal went yeah. on winning the match by two goals to nil. Now, what do you expect yeah. between them and, and Bournemouth? Knowing that Bournemouth are fire, also firing from all cylinders. Just a loss and a draw and three wins in their last five match for Bournemouth. And if you look at the Wolf running... Mm. Not really good in, in the league. In, in, in not not that they are not in a good position in the league, league standard as a mid-table club, but you expected more from them, knowing their antecedents. So, how do you think that these two teams uh, will match up, knowing fully well where they stand in the table? Okay, um, I think my prediction. I gave Wolf the victory here, right? Yeah, it's a two-one victory for Wolf. Yes, um, I did that because um, um, over the season, Wolves have been able to um, stand and be counted when they play the likes of the Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, mm -hmm. um, and then the bottom half teams. They found a way to get results from these um, guys. Um, they struggled, they've struggled um, playing against the big boys um, and the mid-table teams. Um, and so the reason, that's the reason. But you look at um, the current form of both teams, um, Bonnot would should blow them off, but um, considering the antecedent so far this season, Wolves have been able to get results, needed points off these uh, mid-table teams, and then um, the, the 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 teams are down the table, and so that's the reason. And but they've not stopped um, conceding goals. Um, the reason I put one goal there, and then they, they get um, the two goals off. Um, Cunha is still firing. They will be available um, and should be on target that day. Um, except uh, the Bournemouth defender who has been out for a while will be back. And even if he's back, I'm not sure he would um, be much fit to play against them. So Cunha will be a handful yeah. for, for the Bournemouth and defenders. So um, a 2 1 is uh, my prediction. Next up is a match between Crystal Palace and Newcastle. Uh, looking at the mm. Crystal Palace, the, looking at the Crystal Palace, uh, I think they've be, uh, the new manager begin to find his feet um, on grounds, trying to stamp his authority on the team. For Newcastle, mm -hmm. they are getting their players back gradually. They've, yeah. won, they, they, they've, been, take, they've been taking results left, right, centre, knowing fully well that mm -hmm. um, they, can, they, can, they can get a place in Europe at the end of the day. Maybe in the Europa Cup at the end of the day. They are currently sixth position in the, in the league. And if they win against New, New against um, Crystal Palace, a very difficult Crystal Palace uh, team to play, and uh, knowing fully well that Crystal Palace also we, we watch their match against, um, so they played they played uh, Man City and Liverpool back to back against City. They threw their weight, they threw their weight, but yeah. it, it seems the weight wasn't really enough, so they lost that match by four goals to two to City. Then we had, mm. people expected them to melt away in Anfield. They went to Anfield, got no. a goal. They almost scored. A, they, shot, they almost scored a second, a second and a third goal. They, they almost did. A very, a, almost immediately. A very, exactly. A very easy was was there. The likes of Odyssey, all of them in top form. Uh, Mateta also, the top striker also. They did all did their best, and they were the team that reshaped the title race over that weekend. Uh, we thought Asa would take advantage and extend the lead also in that weekend, but Asa also failed to <laughs> fail to oh, Aston Villa. So, like I said, and I told them OC last time was when he was on this show, I said Aston Villa and Crystal Palace are the team were the team team of the week for me because they did they did they did their business individually. And looking at what they did, if you watch them against West Ham, against West Ham in the first half, they are, they are beating West Ham four goals to nil. They did, they did surprising. I'm, I'm seeing that and I'm, I'm surprised. So, 
Yeah, so um, so how do you think it will pan out for for, for Newcastle in at the Shawlos Park, oh, which is a very difficult ground to play play? It it is it is a very very difficult um, ground to go and get points, but you know um, I feel Newcastle might just be too much of a hard nut for them to crack. Um, okay. Newcastle um, know that they need the three points from that match. It, it is a it is a mandatory three points. The reason is Chelsea still have a game in hand, and in the league Chelsea have been beginning to put in some winning streaks. And not losing some match, losing matches. The last five matches now in the league, Chelsea have actually not lost, and they've been putting on um, some winning streaks now. And they, they, there's no certain, there's no certainty anywhere that Chelsea will not win the the, the standing match, um, the outstanding match at hand. And if Chelsea gets to win that, it puts Newcastle, Chelsea, and United on 50 points. Albeit um, Newcastle will be above well, with goal difference, but Chelsea will now be um, on goal difference above United. And then with losing this game against Crystal Palace, gives Chelsea another one game ahead of them. And if Chelsea wins, Chelsea nips them to the Europa League spot. That's not what Eddie Howe wants to see. The entire Newcastle team, the Newcastle um, fans are going to be behind the team to ensure they get, even if it's 1 0. And so Newcastle, um, Crystal Palace on the, on the other hand, are enjoying their new manager. You know, he's allowed the likes of a Barry Chiesa to move as he wants to move. He, he now allows Olise, Olise to drive in, drive and then cut in and enjoy yourself. So you, you look at the Crystal Palace team and you see a team that have been given freedom to enjoy themselves. You know, they, everybody plays. You see Schlop running, they bring, they, they, they're substituting and bringing Schlop to play left back. But before you know it, he's the one standing at the end of um, oh, yeah. of the ball to try to score the ball, to, to score to score a goal. You see, the entire team were enjoying. Mateta, who go, came in and I think when, when Mateta was born, we, we were sitting together and I, I was like, what kind of a player is he? He looks <laughs> like a little player. Would this guy do well in the Premier League? You know, Premier League that we know is all fire guns blazing. And somehow, Mateta, under this new manager, he's beginning to do well. He's beginning to know where the net is um, and begin to try to find the net. I mean, um, the, 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 the fact that he is now aware of the other attackers around him where he tries to have a proper hold of play and then bring in the, the team and the other attackers to play with him. And oh, it's and it's working. It's working for the team. So um, it's going to be a hard one for Newcastle. Uh, but I feel Newcastle might just have a little bit more, you know, to to do to push them just over the line. Uh, but it won't stop New uh, Crystal Palace from scoring. Um, that's why I have um, uh, the, the the predictions like that. Okay, a three one a three one win for Newcastle. Yeah. Are you sure? I, I'm not so sure, but I still stick, stick with the three one. New, um, Newcastle would be three. Um, Newcastle have a more a more fluid um, attack. Um, Isaac, um, uh, got, uh, what's his name? The, the the one from Everton now, the little boy, is doing so well. Chelsea were going to buy him, but he, he slipped through their fingers. He uh, and then they have a Miron yet to come back. Um, and, they have more they have heavy, players. They have heavy, heavy bands. Have heavy bands. In the, in the, heavy bands. The who is also there? So they. What I mean is, they have not just any hard attackers. They have a good nine who scores and scores well, and they have their attackers are also scoring. So it's not just about having a top nine, but every yeah. attacker they have have actually been scoring, and it, it gives them the advantage over um, um, New, uh, Crystal Palace. Those watching us kindly support fancy football by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. And hopefully, uh, we, we will continue to grow. Uh, next up is Old Trafford, Manchester United take on Sheffield United on Wednesday. And Sheffield United, I just see them that uh, at the end of this match, they will finally be uh, considered as an relegation uh, team at the end of the day. So, but we know mathematically. But with what's on ground now, they should be relegated. 16 points, 20th position, and they, I think they've ever been there for a long time in that in that in that place. Um, mm. Looking at the United side, that you don't know in the United team that will turn up. Uh, you have uh, fragment of flashes from Ganacho, uh, Camille from 
from from Rashford, players like Rashford should not be coming up, should not be doing cameo. They should go on and take the game by the scruff of the neck. But you have those things sure. right out there. And uh, you expect that United win this match to you by three goals to need that, which is your prediction. Um, I'm a United fan and um, I've seen United this season and I, I just I just shake my head sometimes. I, I don't have no I don't know I don't have a lot to say. Uh, you know, even even in the WhatsApp group, we don't really I don't really talk much about their performances because uh they blow hot and they blow cold. Uh, a match you expect them to win and you just see they, they draw the match or they lose the match. But this is football and it happens to every team that wants that have been sure, there on sure, the top. Sure. That have been there on the top, the pinnacle, the pinnacle of English football, and want to go see, go back to the top. Um, so, what's in, what informed your decision to go for a three-one, a three-one win, a three-zero win for United against Sheffield United? You know, I was going to give a three-zero prediction, but then United, like Chelsea, can't stop conceding. They concede the, the stupidest of goals. You know, you know, I was going to give it, no matter how poor United is or look right now, not yeah. Sheffield, you know, <laughs> it's not Sheffield. The worst that can happen in that match, the worst that can happen will be, will be a draw and it will still be a goal draw, not um, a scoreless draw. But I don't see United struggling to get three points against Sheffield. Yeah, Sheffield want to um, explode in the first half, do all the running and all, when they resume the second half. United have scored more goals in the second half this season than they've done in the first half. So, and Sheffield have done all their playing in the first half this season than they've done in the second half. So, whatever it's Sheffield are going to come up with, um, that team are unmotivated. They are they've 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 looked at themselves and agreed that they are relegated. Um, they, they are not ready to to pull out the punches and and kill as as the case may be. The 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 likes of the Stokes. Who before they went ensured that none of the top six teams defeated them, but they they went down relegated. But you look at um, Sheffield United. Uh, United will be too much of a, um, a force for them. Um, okay, let's move on. The uh, on one is a two will be witnessing the four hundred and forty four Merseyside derby between Liverpool and Everton. Everton will be at home. They will be hosting Liverpool. Uh, what's your take about this match? Because you've informed us that um, you are going for a Liverpool 2-1 win uh, at Everton. Mm -hmm. Everton, uh, I think they should be safe very soon in terms of relegation. Uh, knowing fully where, where they were with the point deduction, first point yeah. deduction, second point deduction. But Sean Dice have been able to pick his side up and tell them you have to play football and we have to make sure this team still survive a second season relegation battle. So, um, what informed your prediction to go for a Liverpool win in the Merseyside derby? Uh, Liverpool are currently too much. It would be too much for them to handle. I mean, if they couldn't handle um, this Chelsea team, um, well, I, you know, when I say this Chelsea team, uh, I, I wouldn't like Chelsea fans to think um, I'm talking down on Chelsea, but you look at the form um, the team is in compared to the form Liverpool are in, you wouldn't want to yeah. compare. And you look at this Chelsea side putting in putting six goals uh, past them, um, a, 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 a fairly good um, Everton side who have some of their key players out injured and will not be available against Liverpool. A Liverpool side that now have their own players running back from injuries and are beginning to put um, the force together. We might want to say a few of their key players um, look a bit tired and are not doing as delivering as much as they're supposed to do. I believe um, the Champions League game, um, Klopp shot himself with his um, selection. You know, Endo has started proving himself to be the man to depend on. Somehow he refused to start Endo and went to the Soboslai, McAllister. McAllister isn't a DM. I keep saying this. Even at the national team, when the game was on and we're having a debate, I said, even at the national team, Enzo Fernandez at Chelsea plays behind him. McAllister is the guy who plays up front. He, he supports the attack. He's there up front. He isn't at the back dictating how the game will be played. It's almost like even should does that better than him. But somehow, um, Klopp thought better. You know, he had taught himself and shot himself in the foot and got the result they got. So, But he doesn't stop them from being the first they are. <laughs> Diogo Jota is back. You know who he is. Um, Nunes, as wasteful as he is, as Jackson, 
Um, he knows how to assist. He knows how to make the assist. He knows how to score coming off the bench. So it depends on how um, Klopp would want to set, set up his team. But regardless of the setup, um, Liverpool might be too much for will be too much for uh, Everton to 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 to, to conquer. So um, I'm expecting the Liverpool win, a comfortable win. Yeah. Okay, comfortable two one win. Finally, uh, let's go to Brighton. The team in the in the in the south, the only team in the I think they are the only Premier. Okay, you have Bon. Okay, you have Bon Mo too. No, no, the only Premier League team in the south for now. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been puffing and buffing the Zerbi, the speculation left, right, center. I think he, he has been affected by that speculation. Uh, they'll be playing um, Manchester City, a City team that I, I still feel physically they are still weak. They are still weak, whether we like it or not. Uh, and they'll be yeah. going to this but match. You know, the, going into that match, yeah. a lot of teams would have played, um, the likes of Liverpool, Arsenal, would have played too much. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so there will be a lot of pressure. Time to yes. rest. They would yeah. have rested properly. They're no longer in the Champions League. They have nothing to worry about. Just the FA Cup final and then they're having to the play Premier their next game. After um, Liverpool and Arsenal would have played two matches back to back. You know, so it gives them enough time to rest, to recover. Um, match fitness wouldn't be issues for any one of them. And my God, you have a Kevin De Bruyne who would have rested properly. <laughs> um, you don't want to have Rodri, who have rested properly, stand okay. against you with Kevin De Bruyne in that midfield, and then there's Foden, um, there's Haaland, um, there's Alvarez. The, the the list keeps going. It's just like um, you're pulling out Goliath from your team and you're bringing in David. <laughs> it's 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 a shot for a shot, um, a bullet for a bullet. That team will be is fortified, and they would have rested well. And who will be the team they're coming against after resting properly? Brighton, who have been up and down, um, started the season so well. Um, a lot of rumors that the Serbia would even be signed by Manchester United or Chelsea will be going in for the steal again from Brighton. And a lot of rumors, all those rumors have died down today because of the inconsistency of the team, because of the stubbornness of the Zerbi in making some substitutions uh, or in carrying um, um, quarrels with players. From from the back, uh, from off the pitch, bringing it to the yeah. pitch and deciding to punish the player by not fielding him, and then in <laughs> in punishing the player, you punish your team, and they go down losing because this the, exactly. the, what what that player has is was what the team needed to win. But in in the name of punishment, you end up punishing yourself. I mean, um, the likes of Fergie. When they needed to punish you, they did. They, 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 they found a way to make you train more than the entire team. You collect, you take the head right treatment immediately. You even commit your offense. You take the head right and you train more than every other person on the team as your punishment. And then after the whole training, you will now start and suffer well. So you see them um, players coming sharp on that Fergie. Um, after stubbornness, they come back and you see them looking very sharp. Ah, what's wrong? How did it happen? Did they give them injection? No, it was a style of punishment. You don't punish a player by punishing the team. You punish the player by making him work harder than the entire team. <laughs> and then he'll deliver when you call upon him again. So I think this will have to watch his tactics, find a way to keep off the pitch issues, keep them there and keep pitch issues on the pitch, mm -hmm. deal with it, and let everyone go as um, as well I've done. You know, I, I, I accredited um, uh, uh, Pochettino for the way he handled these penalty situations. A lot of persons were saying, oh, he should have come down with the hammer, so tell the both of them immediately and all of that. Uh, he decided to go the other way. He let them be, brought them out later, so it doesn't look like he was pulling them out because of the um, penalty situations. And when they were coming out, a lot of persons were saying, oh, no, no, why did he even hug them? They are his boys. Don't forget, these boys are teenagers. So. Um, a coach is supposed to find a way to send this message across to them. And after the hogs, for the cameras to see and the fans to see, when they went back, yeah. back door, he hammered them well. And then came to the media. And then when they asked him, he told them what he told them and how he has warned them. This will be the last. And if it ever happens exactly. again, he's going to deal with them squarely. So you look at how Pochettino is trying with these young lads. Um, Brighton also have young boys, a lot of young um, guys. A lot of young players. A, a lot of young players on the team. A lot of young players on the team. So you'll have to find a way to deal with these young boys and keep off the pitch issues off the pitch and keep the pitch issues. But I don't think Brighton would even have a stink on City, even though City themselves have been letting in a lot of goals. But I mean, if they would have rested as much as two match days on the third match day before they play, I mean, 
expect them to come all out blazing, all guns and blazing. So 3-1 for City? Yes. Thank you. It's nice to have you on the show, Arome. Um, Arome, uh, Arome is the owner or founder of, um, is it Arome Sport or Ar Arrow Sport? Yeah, Arome Sport um, on Facebook. Or on Facebook, please kindly go there. Really good, rich content uh, for, for from that uh, Facebook page. Uh, I think um, every day updated. So you can go there and find breaking news, uh, live um, live uh, uh, videos as well from, from, from RMS Sport as well. Thank you for having you on Fancy Football and we'd love to have um, you again. No dull moment. No dull moment with you whenever you're here on the show. Uh, good to be back. It's good to be back. So, and I hope uh, I hope I have you on Apam one day on this show, and uh, we have a debate. Oh, yeah. So we do our Chelsea, Manchester, <laughs> Manchester United banter. Yes, yeah, exactly. So exactly. I deal with him. He won't let me rest because of the. It's FFT. a last fan actually. It's a last fan actually. Yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. FFT, it's a last fan actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so we'll have both of you on the show, hopefully. So thank you for being part of this prediction, uh, Premier League prediction uh, uh, midweek show, and um, we'll see you some other time. Thank you. Thank you.